This is a question that I'd gotten and that someone asked me just the other day. And I want to ask your opinion and you can tell me, well, you've been in this industry a really long time. When you turn the machine off, do you always press e-stop and turn it off? Or do you turn it off? What is... What, okay, I have an opinion, but my opinion's... I'm pretty young. You've been doing this much longer. And I know electrically what changes in machines. Pause. Never made a big deal of that. So like no no directions, no bullet. No direction, just turn it off or turn it on. Okay. The Japanese machines made a big difference. Okay. Uh, I, I, they made a big deal about it. They, in directions and what they told you. Yeah. So you always push e-stop first and then you push the off button. And the reason, the reason for that is this, when you push this in, it shuts all the servos up. Yeah. And then when you push the off button, it sh shuts off the control part. So this will shut off hydraulic motors. It shuts off a lot of big magnetic contactors that when they shut off the collapse of the coil, the magnetism around the coil and the contactors can send a spike back through the system. And you will notice if you look electrically on the schematic or on the machines, all of those contactor coils have surge protectors on. Yeah. So typically it's this first and then this. So you're shutting the servo system down. If you just hit the off button on the control, you collapse all the coils on all the contactors and the control all at the same And all the motors. All the motors, everything. And it can send spikes back into the system. And that's... I've never seen Haas... I've never seen anything about Haas worrying about that and telling you to do that. Um, but it's a habit for me because that's the way you do it. You're trained that way working yeah. on Japanese. And it's, it's easier on the whole system. If you think about how it's turned on, this machine does exactly the same thing. If you turn it on, okay, it brings on the control. The servos are not on. That doesn't all come on at the same time. Then you hit the reset button on a Haas and it brings the servo system up. Yeah. On the Japanese controls, Fanuc, Yasnak, all of those, you have a lot of times another button that says power on. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, you have the power on button and then you have the machine ready button. Or the same on button. You push it the twice. Same, yeah, the Yasnak control usually is the same button. You hit it twice. Closets were that way. Yeah. If you looked at the circuit, the first time you pushed it, it turned on everything and it last, and you pushed it again. It's easier on the electronics and there's less spikes being sent somewhere um, by hitting the e-stop off. Turning it on, whether the e-stop is pressed or not, doesn't change anything. No, because it, because you don't get rid of it. Well, uh, yes, that's, that's really because true. Because many machines have a secondary on button. That's right. So this turns on and it's not in e-stop, but the servos are not ready. That's right. It's, but so it's it does have a secondary on button. It's the reset. It's the reset button. You know. If we look in the diagnostics, for instance, if you look in the output, there's an output that says servo power. So if I hit reset, that's yeah, the servo power. power turn, turns on. And now this is an older DC machine. It's a little bit different on other machines. What what I have helped explain this or tried to understand it, and maybe it doesn't make total effect is if you turn the machine on without the e-stop in, yeah. then you're going to be inrushing all the current to the drives. But, but you're not. But you're not. Machines have a second, second, they have a second on button. Yeah. Now, there's another thing. When you press e-stop on a newer Haas that doesn't have a hydraulic counterbalance, the head falls. Ten thou, maybe five thou. It's true because it shuts all the servos it off. It shuts all the servos off. So those machines have a mechanical break, and you'll hear a little thud. Because the head starts to fall a little bit, and then the brake engages, and it stops. But they have an option. They do. That will keep those servos on for a certain amount of time for <clears throat> the brake to clamp before it actually shuts. That's a later software thing. I think high-end yeah. Japanese machines have that work. If you hit e-stop, there's enough time where it first applies the brake of the motor before it turns, before it turns the power, so that you don't have things falling. So, back to answer your question, though, about a Haas... If you press e-stop, the head's going to fall. Drop, I would say. Better better term, better drop. It's not going to fall all the way down. I have put my indicator and measured, and it's 5 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, it, a little bit of a drop. It screws up your part. <laughs> yeah, if you're <laughs> machining a part and the power turns off, or you hit e-stop or turn the machine, it's going to fall a little bit. Yeah. 
Or so if you were to turn the machine off, the head would drop a little bit. The same thing. Or if you were to press E stop, the head would drop a little bit. I just worked on the YCM Supermax. Had a big old contactor. I'll put the video here. And you turn the machine on, and when you hit the reset button or the on button again, that contactor pulled in, yeah. and that put power to the servos. Whenever you hit e-stop, all the power to the servos was turned off. Right. Fidal has the same thing. You know, if you hit e-stop or you first turn the machine well, off... Fidal has a chain counterbalance that doesn't have anything else. That was ever drop. That doesn't drop. But this, this one's not going to drop. Was, yeah, this whole machine has a counterbalance. But the Fidals had an interesting thing where they disconnected the DC power to the servos. Maybe, I didn't look. I, I've looked at the electrical schematic on a Fidal, and it physically disconnects the power of the servos. Okay. And many other high-end machine tools do. They physically disconnect the power when the e-stop is pressed or when the machine is first turned on. It's that well, second on button. They don't really, in e-stop, it does shut the power off to the servo. Huh? On a Haas. Yeah. Yes, it but I think... shut the three... <laughs> I think they took the cheaper route and said... Let's not have a physical contactor and have a software lockout. Well, I agree. It doesn't. It doesn't kill the 320 volts, which is the power to the amp. No, but it stops sending the the command signals to the amplifiers. Right. To stop. So, for instance, if you have axes moving and the spindle is moving, and you hit e stop. Yeah. What happens is the spindle stops quickly. Yeah. It doesn't let it freewheel, it's and the axes software. stop quickly. That's software. Yeah. If you had just disconnected the power. You would have freewheel down. Yeah, and sometimes you troubleshoot noise in the spindle by turning the main breaker. No, not this. Yeah. Well, you can know this is the same as the breaker. Well, the on a Haas. On a Haas. That's true. That's Other true. machines, no. You have to turn the main breaker off, and then the spindle will coast to a stop. You don't stop fast. So back to people who are listening and asking, turning the machine off with e stop first is good in the sense that you disconnect the power and all this turn the servos off first. Yeah. Then you turn the control off. That's the, the correct order of operations. That's the correct. And there's nothing wrong with doing that on a Haas. The only difference I see is the head's going to fall, drop when you push the e-stop, or the head's going to drop a little bit when you turn it off. Depending on the machine. Depending on the machine. That's true. And on a lathe, sometimes e-stop doesn't shut the hydraulics off. Which you don't want the chuck opening and the part flying off. Yeah, that's true. Some machines have built-in, or even chuck actuators or chucks, they have built-in locking mechanisms where if it's still spinning and it loses pressure, it will still hold the part. So, not all. Not us. Not, <laughs> a high-end Pratt Werner um, chucks that I've worked on do. They were not. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> no, they weren't. No, that the chuck fry costs as much as a used huh? But it's... Depending on the size of the part, the chuck's not going to open. It's just not going to have as much clamp force. Yeah. So if you got a really big, heavy part hanging way out, it's liable to start wobbling around. Yeah. So e stop pressed while the spindle's turning, you wouldn't want the hydraulics to turn off, especially if you had the tailstock holding it or a hydraulic to hurt it. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Very good. Thanks for the fun.